back, people asked me and they said, Gabe, where were you when you were in this coma? And I was with Jesus, standing right in front of him. Here was Jesus. Father God was right here. And let me tell you, a lot of people say, Gabe, what does he look like? Pure love. Who's excited for this morning? I don't know about y'all, but uh, you guys know how I grew up and my dad, he would cook steak. And I don't care how my day was going, like how crazy school was, how crazy football practice was. If he said he was cooking steak, oh my goodness. How many of y'all know you just, you lose mind of everything else and you just think about that steak, that juicy steak with the A1 sauce? Oh, well, how many of y'all know the word of God is, is, word, is uh, bread to our bodies, better than steak, amen? Say this with me, better than steak. Amen, all right. Um, so I will first start out with my testimony. Um, this is a pretty recent thing that happened. And uh, if you'd like, you can throw up the photo now. So that was me six months ago. Um, I was in JPS Hospital. What had happened was I was on an electric skateboard called a boosted board. Um, and I didn't really know how to ride skateboards, but I would get on that thing and just fly like 20, 25 miles per hour. Uh, it was pretty crazy. And uh, while I was riding it and I hit a tiny bump, flipped off of it, landed my head on the road and my skull cracked. Um, it was really rough, brain was bleeding. Um, and then I threw up into my lung, really nasty, I won't go into that. Basically, I was uh, struggling to breathe. I was breathing only once every 60 seconds, and my life was this close to being completely dead. But praise God, I have some good news for you guys. While I was in a coma, right around roughly two-week coma, in the hospital, doctors were coming saying, oh, well, he's either gonna die or be a vegetable, be a, just have nothing. While they were saying that, there were people standing in prayer. There were people standing in faith. And I'm so, so thankful. And uh, after roughly two or three weeks, I woke up and I was healed. And I was brought back. And I was brought out of that coma, yeah. <laughs> and you know, this past Easter, I loved being reminded about the resurrection of Jesus, right? And, and but not only did I, was I just reminded of the resurrection of Jesus, I was reminded how the Holy Spirit now lives inside of us. And this resurrection that Jesus had, it's not just a cool story. It's not just like a nice sermonette, uh, get in front of a pulpit, oh, y'all wanna hear a cool story? No, this Jesus is alive in us today. He's not just someone that beat the cross and beat death for three days. He beat whatever it is that you are facing. He accomplished the victory that we need in our lives. And for me, it just so happened to be that my craziness and stupidness led me to a coma, but yet his power and victory was still greater than my craziness. How many of y'all can be honest with yourselves and admit, like, you've had some crazy times in life? Anybody? Oh, just me. Yeah, y'all are perfect. I forgot. I'm preaching to a perfect church this morning, right? But we all have times where we feel crazy and down. But how many of y'all know Jesus always will bring you out? And uh, so two or three weeks went by, and everybody was praying. All these doctors and nurses were saying, oh, well, you might 50-50 odds of living or death, but if he comes back, it might be a little vegetable. But there were people praying, standing in agreement, and they would speak over me, and they would pray over me, and I'm so thankful. And uh, they spoke words of faith. And when I woke up, I looked around, and you know what I noticed? I didn't have pain in my head. No pain in my head. I was healed. The only thing I was uh, really frustrated at was they shaved my head. Uh, so I don't know if you can see this, but so they shaved my hair. Uh, Y'all see that little hole? Because they, they stick a hole in my brain to monitor the, the pressure. And so well, when I woke up, I didn't have any pain. I was like, why, what am I doing in the hospital? And these nurses were coming in. You just almost died. I was like, why are y'all crying? Like, I'm healed. Don't you see me? And they said, yeah, we do see you. you. Anyways, but I looked myself in the mirror. I was like, man, I got to get my hair back. But praise God, my hair came back. Come on, somebody. How many of y'all are thankful for hair out here? Now, if you don't have hair currently, I, uh, I apologize. But, you know, it'll, when you come to go to heaven, it'll come back, okay? Uh, anyways, <laughs> um, so it was, it was so amazing, and I was, I'm so grateful that, and now I look back, and I remember how it wasn't God's plan for me to crack my skull. God wasn't up in heaven saying, I'm going to make Gabe crazy. I'm going to make him fall off his skateboard and almost die. He didn't say that. You know who was responsible for that? Me. The Holy Spirit was telling me on that skateboard to slow down and be smart. Also, I wasn't wearing a helmet. I don't think I was wearing a shirt either. Anyways, <laughs> um, I wasn't being smart, right? God was trying to tell me, Gabe, Gabe, slow down. I don't want you to get hurt. But I was like, vroom. And, but yeah, even in my stupidness, God was still there with his love. He's greater than your mistakes. 
the blood of Jesus is thicker than our craziness. Amen? Say that with me. The blood of Jesus is thicker. Amen. So anyways, uh, I woke up and praise God, uh, ever since my hair grew back and uh, I, I haven't been a vegetable, my memory came back. Um, they thought, oh, we might have not a memory. He might not be the same personality. Well, if anything, I'm more like Jesus. And something amazing happened. You know, when I came back, people asked me and they said, Gabe, where were you when you were in this coma? And I was with Jesus, standing right in front of him. Here was Jesus. Father God was right here. And let me tell you, a lot of people say, Gabe, what does he look like? Pure love. And when he looked at me, he wasn't, you know that look that some people can give you when they're just like mad at you or just displeased with you? Y'all know, you know, it's, it's that look if you're like late for school, your teachers are, no, no, he's never like that. As he looked at me, he believed in me. He believed the best of me. He, he didn't find all my faults. He didn't, oh, you're crazy. How could I believe? No, he believes in you. And I just sensed so strong today as I was praying for this message and just getting ready for it. That's what God wants you to know today. The same way that he looked at me, he looks at you. The Bible says in Acts 10, 38, of a truth I perceive, God is no respecter of persons. And this testimony I'm sharing with you this morning is not to say, oh, I'm God's favorite. I'm some special person. No. This Jesus died on the cross for you. He has one person on his mind right now. It's you. You may think to yourself, well, what about my person beside me? Yeah, them too. <laughs> He's thinking about you right now. Um, so I came back and praise God. Also, um, the, the videos and testimony have been reaching the world. Millions of views since I came back. And what the devil meant for evil, God turned it for good. The devil tried taking me out, and God then healed me. Y'all say this with me. Jesus, he's the healer. So I just share this testimony with you guys. Um, if you ever struggle with bodily pain, uh, we live on this earth, so we will face the battle, but we can always win. Hold out your heart. Stay strong. Don't give up. Don't give in. Even when people come against you, even when people say a lot of stuff that might scare you, go back to God's word. Stay strong. He healed me. He heals you too. He's our healer. He never fails. Never failed yet. Turn with me in your Bibles to Romans chapter 1. It's funny. I was talking about steak this morning. Now I'm kind of thinking about steak. Anybody else? Who could be honest? Oh, okay. <laughs> Romans chapter 1. And uh, we'll be reading in verse 15. Praise God. Um, verse 15. I'm ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. Verse 16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes. To the Jew first and also to the Greek. Now, before we read verse 17, I'll, I want to explain that a little bit. How many of you guys know what Jesus has done for us on the cross is completely everything we need? How many of y'all know Jesus doesn't need to die again? He doesn't, uh, some people say, well, if I need to be like Jesus, that mean I need to die on a cross? No, no, the work's finished. Say that with me, the work's finished. Um, and I'll, I'll kind of compare it to this. How many of you guys know when you go to a, a good buffet? Now, I know there's not as many buffets in Fort Worth anymore, but how many of y'all know a good buffet has everything you need? Uh, for the kids, for the middle age, for the old age, everybody can get what they want. The dessert, for me, I always go to the buffet for the ice cream, especially. I'm like, yeah, that food's cool, but oh, the ice cream, unlimited. My mama can't tell me I can't have any more. Oh, I'm free out here. Um, but here's the thing. If you show up to a restaurant and you say to yourself, oh, I'm good. I don't need any food. Ah, uh, nah, I'm, I'll pass. I don't need any food. Do you think any of that food will get into you? You've got to choose to what? Eat it, right? It's pretty simple. <laughs> I'm not, this ain't deep, okay? This, this is pretty simple. God's word is simple. When it comes to salvation, he's already provided the way for everyone to be saved. He's provided the way for everyone to be happy, for everyone to have ice cream of his joy. It's up to us. Say that with me. It's up to us. Say that with me. It's my choice. It will always be our choice. What are you going to choose today? And how many of you guys have eaten before in your life, right? I hope you have, yeah, and you're here. Did y'all, if y'all during this sermon, if you're a human, you're gonna be thinking about lunch, amen. And you're gonna be thinking about lunch. Are you gonna think to yourself, oh, I've already had lunch before yesterday, so I don't need it again today. No, no, you're, you're thinking to yourself, man, lunch yesterday was back in. I'm about to have some more today, <laughs> right? That's how we need to be even more with the word of God. 
right? We've heard sermons before. Anybody? Yeah, right? We've read our Bibles before, right? We've seen worship before. But every single day we can get more. I'm getting more and more full. I get hungry every single day, more hungry. Sarah says to me sometimes, she jokes, she says, man, Gabe, you hungry. You just had a plate, Gabe. You still hungry? I'm like, yes. <laughs> but, you know, that's not made me be righteous because I need to, you know, watch my, you know, how much food I to eat. But anyways, spiritually, you can never be too hungry. You can never be like, God will never tell you, you've been too hungry for me. You've been too passionate for me. I'll never tell you that. Amen? Amen. We're having fun today. It's going to be fun. Amen. It's a vibe, yo. All right. Uh, where were we reading? Romans 1, uh, 17. For therein, therein is a little uh, old word, but that means in. It's simple. Is the righteousness of God revealed, shown from faith to faith, as it is written, the just will live by faith. Look with me now in verse 20. We're going to see something really cool. Romans 1, 20. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, his eternal power and Godhead, so that they, and when he says they, it means everyone on earth, is without excuse. Um, and I'll, I'll, I want to tell you another thing about my testimony. When I was in heaven, Jesus showed me on earth. I saw from heaven down on earth. He showed me these bridges that were formed every time someone joined in agreement with God's word and prayed. And these bridges formed. But when they form, they don't just go straight. When you pray God's word, when you join in with God and speak his word out loud, your prayers don't stay here. Jesus joins in with them. Jesus showed me while I was in heaven, he showed me these prayers forming high. Guess where they go? Heaven. When we pray the word of God, when we pray for each other, when we even get a text message about a friend that needs prayer and we speak a word over them, maybe we're not with them in the hospital. Maybe we're not with them in their situation. Our words join in with Jesus. There's never a wasted prayer. Turn with me in Matthew chapter 18. Also, I want you guys to know um, the words that I'm speaking to you this morning, I don't want you to simply say, oh, well, Gabe said it, so I believe it. No. God says this, so we believe it, right? And the things that I tell you, I will, I will also say, if I say to you anything this morning that you're like, what is that? Go back to your Bible, right? Go back to the Word of God. Because what I'm telling you right now isn't important because it's my opinion. I'm just some crazy white boy. You don't need, you don't need, what, I, you don't need what I think. You don't need my opinion. You need the Word of God, right? Say that with me, the Word of God. The Word of God. Amen. Matthew chapter 18. Amen. That's why I say to myself, man, when I get thoughts, I'm like, well, I better, the Bible better say it. You know what I'm saying? The Bible better say it. Matthew 18, and uh, we're going to be looking in verse, um, we'll start in ver- Matthew 18, we'll start out in verse 18. Jesus said, red words. How many of y'all love red words in your Bible? Man. Ooh. He said, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Verse 19, again, I say unto you, if two of you will agree on earth as touching anything that they ask, it will be done for them of my Father who's in heaven. Um, And then verse 20, where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. Now turn with me in your Bibles to John chapter one. We're going somewhere really cool. God showed me some amazing things as I was praying for this sermon. Some things I... I had never seen quite like this. The Bible says, John 1, 14, the word was made flesh and dwelled among us. We beheld his glory. The glory is of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Now, begotten of the Father means born from the Father. How many of y'all know that's Jesus? Say that with me, Jesus. God in heaven made his word into a body. That's who Jesus is. So the way that Jesus how many of y'all know that scripture where two or three are gathered together in my name? Jesus said, there am I in the midst of them, right? When we speak his name and when we join in agreement with each other and with his word, when we speak his word, it's not just a nice fairy tale story we're doing. We are allowing him to join our situation. His word is how he gets to us. His word is how he gets to every part of our life. Um, this water bottle, if I had a hole in it right here, right? 
hand, I squeezed the water bottle. The, this water is water, right? But the way this water transfers is through a stream, right? I know it sounds pretty simple. The word of God, this is, think of this water like it's God. When God gives us his word, he's giving us himself. And so, but the key is every time we listen to the word, every time we speak the word, we don't just want to be like um, unhungry for it. We don't just want to be used to it. We don't just want to be, oh, it's normal. No, just another scripture, just another sermon. And I'll say this, guys. Out of all the people here, I'm the most guilty of hearing sermons that I was tired and I just was like, okay, I'm thinking about lunch right now. <laughs> Trust me. We're all, we all have made mistakes before, but the good news is today we can go higher. Say that with me. Today, I'm going higher. And so when it comes to how we speak the word of God, when it comes to whatever it is you're facing in your life, we, when we find his word and when we speak it, he joins in with us in agreement. And I also will say, if there's areas of our life in our past that we've, that we've prayed for, that we've desired, and it hasn't necessarily happened yet, don't quit. Don't give up. Don't, don't allow that to change who God is to you. He's good. Say it with me. He's good. Say this with me. He's never failed me yet. Say this with me. He's perfect. Amen. Turn with me now in your Bibles to Hebrews chapter, uh, Hebrews chapter 11. I'm not necessarily a nerd. Uh, I'm not a big nerd, but we're about to see something that will make us all feel like nerds, but it's God-given nerds, which is are a lot better. Amen? Amen. <laughs> it's going to be pretty simple. So Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 3 says, through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. A lot of people wonder, how did God actually create the earth and the heavens? I, as, as we all know, we've heard about, well, atheists will be like, well, people will be like, oh, big bang and blah, 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 blah. But we know that God created the heavens and the earth by his word. Say that with me, by his word. In Genesis 1, don't, you don't have to turn there, but um, in verse 3 in the Hebrew, when God said light be and light was, the way God created light, the way God created everything, he spoke it into existence. That's how he makes the transfer. Here's what's so cool. Um, so basically, there is a protein called laminin that is essential to every living thing. Um, it is a high molecular weight of a protein of a matrix. Um, the purpose of this protein is it's responsible for nearly every task in cellular life, including cell shape and inner organization. It's a lot of nerdy words. I'm sorry if I don't know, because that made me be like, what do those words mean? But basically, it's essential. Say that with me. It's essential. Say this with me. It's the foundation. The picture behind me is the photo of Laban. How many of y'all know? What does that look like? Somebody tell me. The cross. Also, I think it's, it's kind of cool. I don't know if y'all see this, but these little feet right here. I don't know. But there's something about it. Now, obviously, it's not like the perfect, it's not wooden, you know, it's not the perfect cross. But here's what's so cool. The word was made flesh and dwelled among us. The very thing, this is living proof. The very thing. Now, we can't look at our hands and see that until we get a, a scope. And I don't know, they do all that biology stuff. This is living proof that you are breathing because the word of God works. People say, Gabe, can you prove to me God exists? Gabe, can you just show me God exists? Did you know the earth is rotating at around 1,000 miles per hour? Now, you don't notice that. You don't feel it right now. You're used to it. You've been born that way. You're breathing. How many of you guys have been thinking about every breath you've had so far today? Let's be honest. No, you don't think about that. It's just natural because God's word never fails. And if you're in a time and season of your life where you're, you're like just being honest with yourself, you're like, man, I want to know that God's with me. You can look at your lungs. You can breathe in and out. Understand you're alive. And God set you down here on this earth for a purpose. And how many of y'all know Jesus wasn't just for 2,000 years ago? He's for us today. He now lives in us today. And the reason why we're here gathered together on a Sunday morning in church, we could be a million other places right now. The reason is because we're family here. When I played football, we were family, man. We were together. I never got tired of team meal. Never. Yo, it could be anything. They could have CC's pizza. Well, that would even be better, but... 
They could have anything. If I was with my family eating, nothing beats that. Um, and these words that we've learned today, final scripture, 2 Corinthians 5, this, these scriptures, this, this word of God is, is our answer. This is the way we always respond. How many of y'all know if you had Jesus' telephone, if you actually had his telephone to heaven, you had his iPhone 100,000, <laughs> right? And he was in heaven. How many of y'all, in every problem, in every situation, you'd want to call Jesus? I hope you would, right? Come on. I don't know about y'all, but I'm going to call Jesus to figure out which football to catch. I'm going to call him to figure out which restaurant to go to. He knows the good fried chicken. Like, he's given us his phone number here and also sent the Holy Spirit to live inside of us. We can encourage ourselves when we feel alone, when, when we feel like maybe things aren't working out. Set your eyes back on this word of God. Choose not to quit. Choose to be a warrior. The best players on a team are not the ones who just go along with whatever it is and however their day is going. And Oh, if, if there's a tall player on the other team, then we'll just have to lose. No. You know how to win? You've got to have the heart. You've got to understand who lives inside you. Also with football, if you have a good quarterback, how many of y'all know the Patriots? I guarantee you Patriots players would sometimes feel like they weren't good enough, and then they'd look to Tom Brady. Y'all know, yeah, amen. <laughs> they'd look to Tom Brady, and they'd be like, oh, yeah, yeah, we good. <laughs> Tom's on our side. Tom's on our side. They may not like Bill Belichick. He might have been mean on him, but anyways, they know who their leader is. Tom Brady, I don't know, seven Super Bowls? I mean, it was wild, yo, for, in a good way. How many of y'all know Jesus is greater than Tom Brady? So whoever team you're facing today, whatever it is you've been going through, your quarterback's better. Your leader's better. He's got you. He's got you in his palm of his hands. Choose to speak his words over whatever it is that situation may be. Choose to speak his words. Final scripture, 2 Corinthians 5. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Before we keep reading, I want to bring us back to words. So here's what's so cool. How many of you guys know words are a sound, right? The way you're listening to me right now, you're listening to the sound of my voice. And how many of you guys know when you're playing a song, you get on beat. Now, unless you're white like me, uh, you have good beat, okay? So uh, uh, you can laugh, it's okay. <laughs> uh, I don't have that good beat. Like, they'd be playing a slow song, and I'd be like... <laughs> but in general, when a sound is coming forth, it has a certain wavelength, right? And in general, how many of you guys know, most people, when they hear the wavelength, they'll get on track with it, or at least try. <laughs> they'll get more on track with it. And the words that we speak form wavelengths that we may not be able to see with our eyes, but our life is being built upon our wavelengths. That's why when somebody encourages you, that's why when somebody comes up and talks to you and asks you how your day is and, and how you're doing and cares about you by their words, you think to yourself, wow, this person cares about me, Right? Your words are not just playground things. Your words are not just uh, things you're feeling or, or just, just little things to say. Your words shape your life. That's why uh, to become born again, to become saved. How many of y'all know? Believe in your heart and confess with your mouth. Get it out there. Put it to work. When I played football, we had our team meal. And you know what we did the next day? We ran our bus off. <laughs> we ran it off. We did something with it. If I just ate all day, I, I wouldn't be strong. How many of all know? Amen. I wouldn't be strong. If I just ate, uh, I'd be, you know, I got to do something with it. So this word that you guys hear today, it's just the start of our week. Amen. This word that we're receiving today, let's run with it. When it comes to our friends, our family, let's love them with our words. Let's speak life. Let's speak life over our bodies. Let's speak life over our cities, over our, your church here. Let's speak life. Say that with me. Speak life. Say this with me. I'm a representation of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Let's keep reading. In 2 Corinthians 5, um, and we'll look at uh, verse 18. All things are of God who has reconciled us, brought us back to himself by Jesus Christ, has given to us the ministry of reconciliation. Verse 19. God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not holding their trespasses against them, and has committed unto us the word of of reconciliation. Say that with me. The word of reconciliation. Now, reconcile means bring back. 
It means to restore, to put back in the right place. And guess how we do that? With our words. Um, the job of the body of Christ. How many of y'all know, I'm sorry I use football examples a lot, so if you don't know football, I apologize. God will speak to you and show you the most amazing sport. Uh, we never just had one player on the team. We needed all people. We needed the, the big ins. The, we needed the 300 pounders. We needed the small ones, the fast, quick corners. We needed the safety. We needed the linebackers. We needed everybody. This body of Christ, this family here is not, now you guys have an amazing pastor. My goodness. But he's the leader. We all need each other. We're a team here. We're family here, right? And so I've been tempted before in my life. I've heard pastors and speakers, and I've been like, wow, they're good. They're getting a lot of good stuff done for God. And then I'll be like, okay, well, now I'm going to go to school. Like, they, okay, they checked the box. Now I'm good. This message I'm giving to you guys today is not for you to think, wow, well, that's a, that's a good sermon. Wow, preachers are doing good. Well, I'm good to go. No, this is empowering you. This is enabling you to walk out what God has for you. God believes in you. I'm telling you, he's thinking about you every single second. He has a plan for your life. Don't quit. Don't give up. Um, let's keep reading. Verse 20. Now then we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be reconciled to God. Verse 21. For God made Jesus to be sin for us, for he has made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Um, if you guys are like me and, and you're starting, you know, you realize like the importance of your words, you might be facing a thought right now of, uh, Gabe, do you know how many uh, bad words I've said in my life? Like, do, do you know how many times I've not done this? Right? For me, that's, that's something I thought as God was giving me this message yesterday. I was like, Lord, I, uh, I've made some mistakes before. What he showed me was, and this is so amazing, no matter how many mistakes we've made with our words, no matter how many times we chose to simply believe what we're seeing instead of believing what God says, he always forgives and washes clean. He sees you white as snow. You have a fresh start today. I know all of us here are most likely born again, right? You know you're forgiven. But we can still be pulled down sometimes by our mistakes. Um, when I was a young kid, I used to be the biggest cusser in my grade. I used to be the guy that was actually uh, bullying people. I even ran an online thing bullying people kids. It was horrible. I was using my words and being so bad with it, right? But two or three years ago, when God got on my heart to start social media and to start reaching my generation, instead of thinking to myself, oh, oh I just made too many mistakes. I mean, I don't know, kids just think I'm crazy. I don't even have social media, God. Like, I can't do that. Instead of thinking to myself, I thought, yeah, if God's leading me in this direction, I can do it. If God's put something on your heart, He's the one that's going to be responsible for it. He's got you. Don't fear. Don't worry. He, if he's given you a family, if he's given you friends, which he has, I mean, we're all here right now, right? <laughs> he's got you. He's going to watch over us. We can trust him today. Say this with me. Jesus, I trust you. I trust your word. Amen. Uh, let's, uh, let's finish out in the scripture. It says, For he has made him to be sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So when you face thoughts of unworthiness, when you face thoughts of temptation, I'm, I'm being real honest with you guys here. Like, that's be, we're all human. You can't, you can't ever have perfect thoughts. Like, we all face thoughts. It's what we do with them. It's your choice whether or not you'll let them stay. It's your choice. It's like bird, right? When a bird flies over your head, can y'all stop birds from flying in the sky? Anybody, any? Anybody, really? No. But can you stop them nesting in your head? Who has a bird nested in their head right now? Praise God, ain't none of y'all got a bird in your head. <laughs> that's an amazing hat, but that's not a bird. <laughs> that's an amazing hat. But it's the same way with our thoughts, right? We're getting crazy thoughts up in our head. Let's respond with the Word of God. And don't let it affect your identity. Don't think that you're a bad person or you're not worth God's love or you're not worth God using because you've had those bad thoughts before. He still believes in you. That's not who you truly are. Who you truly are is right here. You have been made the righteousness of God in Christ. So even when you feel like you're nothing, even when you feel like you've fallen down and you can't get back up again, pick up your head and remember what God says about you. He believes the best of you. You are the righteousness of Jesus. It's the trade-off. It's the trade-off. Say that with me. I am 
the righteousness of Jesus. So um, you may you may be wondering, like Gabe, like what is it about prayer that that we can we can move forward? And it's something that scripture in Matthew 18 is something I'm I'm pretty sure you've already heard a good bit. I would just remind you in our lives, our purpose is to help others. Our purpose is to love others. And I, I hear in my heart strong right now, if you feel like you're struggling with an area and you keep thinking about it and it keeps coming back up, I would encourage you, set your eyes on the word of God and seek God's presence and think about another person. Think about what another person's going through and pray for them. It feels sometimes rough, maybe what you're going through, but choose to take your eyes off of your own problems and think about another and lift them up in prayer. And you may not feel like you have enough. You may not feel like you may not have enough energy or maybe you had a rough day at work, whatever it may be. Choose to always think, how can I love others today? How can I speak words of life over others? That's why we're on this earth. The reason I was sent back down to this earth, God showed me he still has a destiny for me. If you're breathing, you have a destiny. Everyone in here right now, everyone watching online, you have a destiny to fulfill. God's not done with you. You may face temptations, thoughts, th things coming up in your head. Oh, well, I I'm, I'm at this uh, age. I'm in this cycle of my life. I'm in, I've seen this. I've heard that. No, God's never done with you. He's never done with you. He believes the best of you. He's got you. He's better than Tom Brady. Come on. He's, he's so much better than the best thing you've ever experienced in life. He's so much better and he's worth it. And, and someday you will be in heaven and you will look back on the life you live now on earth. You will be thankful you did his work. You will be thankful that you decided to be like him. How many of y'all know Jesus didn't walk this earth and say, oh, my life's so rough. I don't know what I'm gonna do. I don't have a car, so I just have a donkey. I don't have anything good on this life. This Texas weather is crazy. The Cowboys lost another game. No. How many of y'all know? How many of y'all know? Be honest with yourselves. If somebody's like that in your life, they're, they're just finding little stuff and they talk bad about it. You're like, what? You feel the energy from them. I, I say it like this, bad vibes. Now, if we're being honest, we all should look at ourselves and be like, where have I been given bad vibes? <laughs> I know some of us, when I'm listening to a sermon sometimes, I'm listening, and then I'm like, oh, that's for my mom. Well, I don't live with my mom, but that's what, you know, I'll be like, that's for my friend. My friend needs to hear this right out. <laughs> and what's best is to look at ourselves. Say that with me. Look at myself. <laughs> Say this with me. Jesus, thank you for changing me. Thank you for changing my mind today. And um, I know you, you, you might have heard this and thought, okay, Gabe, so what you're saying is like, if I speak words, everything will go good in life. Well, uh, it will go better if you speak the right words from the start. But words are just the start. Um, you know, Jeremiah is my friend. I love him, right? I'm just going to be like, oh, Jeremiah, I love you, bro. But when we want to hang out, we want to we go work out with each other, we're going to go work out. I'm not going to say, Jeremiah, I love you, you're my friend, and never hang out with him, right? Yeah. So when it comes to our relationship with God, it's not just speaking words. But when we put our words out the way God wants them to, when we speak God's word, our life will follow it. That's why the, the way to beat uh, sin and maybe an addiction or maybe like you feel like you're just in a rough place, the way to beat it is to remind yourself who you truly are. Because the devil's trying to get you to a place of, oh, you horrible person. You, you, you go to church, but but you just made this mistake or you just said this or you just thought this, right? And the devil's trying to get you over here. And, he's, and he wants to be, get you ashamed of your past. He wants to get you in guilt about your past. But God says, this is my child. This is the one who my blood was shed for on the cross. He's mine. She's mine. That's what God says about you. You have a mighty deliverer. You have a mighty redeemer. You never have to fear your past mistakes. You never have to fear what the devil is trying to currently do to you. You never have to fear falling off of an electric skateboard. I mean, we all learn our lesson today, right? Amen. <laughs> um, you never have to fear what the devil tries to do to you in life. Thank you, Lord. 
when it comes to the right standing of God, what I loved about when I was in front of Jesus was I didn't feel like a stranger at all. I didn't feel like an outsider. I didn't feel... Uh, how many of you guys know, like, if we went to... If we all were at a executive meeting with the Packers and Cowboys, uh, we'd feel kind of out of place, right? I mean, I know some of y'all might have loved the Cowboys, but uh, you're not the executive CEO of the Cowboys, right? You might feel a little out of place. You're like, I don't know if I belong here. That's not what it's like with God at all. The creator of the universe has not chosen to call us strangers. He's not chosen to call you just a churchgoer. You're not just a churchgoer to him. You're not just somebody that thinks nice, oh, nice little Christian. No, you're his family. Say that with me. I'm in God's family. I'm God's child. And because let's be honest, right? When we get, became born again, when we give our life to Christ, we still have the same body. I didn't become a 200 pound, 250 pound ripped man when I gave my life to Christ. Did anybody here? No, that's what I thought. Now some of us wish like we did. Okay. <laughs> But our bodies don't change. We still have a flesh, say that with me, flesh, down here on this earth. And you, you got to stay on the right spirit mind. Stay following the words of Jesus Christ. It'll keep your eyes in the right place. And if you fall down, get back up again. The Bible says a righteous man falls seven times, yet he gets back up again. Say that with me. A righteous man may fall seven times, but he gets back up again. God believes the best of you. He sees you as his righteousness. He sees you as his family. And you never have to question anything. I'll close with this. When I, I grew up in Virginia, when I was 18, I moved out, went to Bible college, uh, graduated uh, this past year, praise God. And, uh, but sometimes I still visit my family back home. I love them so much. And when I visit my family back home, I never ask my mother or father if I could get into the fridge. How many of y'all know exactly what I'm talking about? When you see that fridge, that's yours. And I may be 1,200 miles away from them right now. That fridge is still mine. <laughs> my dad, my dad gets a steak up in there, mine. <laughs> and that's how he wants me to be. He doesn't want me to walk up in the house like, oh, Father, may I have thy steak, please? What do you think? Do you think that I can have what you have? No. He wants me to be real with him. Say that with me. Be real with him. We need to stop thinking of God like some, like, person that... Now, I will say it's important to be respectful to him. He's worthy. Uh, he's a creator. But he's our father. He's not somebody that we need to be like, Oh, God, I don't know what you're going to do. I don't know what you want. I don't... Oh, will you give me your fridge? Will you give me your life and healing and love and joy? No. He's going to say to you like, I love you. Why are you even asking me? I'm all ready for you. What, you didn't see when I gave Jesus on the cross? What, you don't see by the breath inside your lungs? By that little, I don't know, the scientific word for the little cross thing that I was showing y'all? It's all proof. It's all God saying to us, I'm for you. You never have to question it. You say, well, God, like, I don't know. I, eat, I didn't eat vegetables when my mom didn't eat too. My boss didn't like me that day. Like, uh, I let down my family member that time or my friend that time. No, all those things are so little compared to the blood of Jesus. It's so much thicker. It's so much greater. In Virginia, where I grew up, the distance that I traveled, if anything was more than five minutes, I thought it was a like, decade away. I was like, that's so far. I'm not trying to go there. And we all know here in Texas, if something's 30 minutes, that's down the block. That's close. <laughs> like, we, we changed our minds. I changed my mind. Now, if something's an hour away in Virginia, I'm like, yeah, I'll go. That's nothing. Now, gas prices, that's another story. But anyways. <laughs> We, our minds change when we understand the actual comparison. Our life that we live down here on this earth compared to eternity we have with God, it's little. What is a big deal is how we love others. What will last for eternity is who we are. So our family here, God's plan for you, God's purpose, he's got you. Trust him today. Amen. Amen. Stay with me on your feet. And uh, wherever you are, we're, we're just going to, we're going to get close to God. He's, he's spoken to us.
And uh, wherever you are, if you'd like, just close your eyes with me. Place your hands on your heart. And repeat these words after me. Jesus, I believe you died on that cross. After three days, you rose again. I repent of all sins. I receive my cleansing. I'm free. I'm born again. God, I'm your child. Thank you for living inside me. Jesus, you're alive in me. I choose to speak your word. I say what you are saying. I will never quit because you never quit on me. Thank you for filling me with the Holy Spirit and power. You have a plan for me on this earth. You're helping me. You've got me in your hands. Everything will be okay. I cast my cares over on you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, everybody. Praise God. Woo, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Well, guys, I love y'all so much. Thanks for coming this Sunday morning. This was a bunch of fun. Thank you, Pastor. This, you have such an amazing church here. You're leading in such an amazing way. And, and thank you, Pastor Melanie. Thank you so much. And thanks for having me. Uh, it was fun. Everybody watching, uh, before I get out of here, everybody watching, I'm putting Father's House Church in the description down below. Um, also, if you guys want to sow into Father's House, it's an amazing church here. I'm going to put their description down below. And, uh, and yeah, amen. Okay, I think now is when I take off the mic. Yeah, amen. 